The Delta outbreak has totaled 4,352 total community cases. There were 113 new cases yesterday. Take a look at this. But only one new case at the border. And on News Hub Live at 6 last night, Amelia Wade spoke to a woman in MIQ whose father was dying in hospital just across the road from her hotel. She wasn't allowed out and he didn't make it. Take a look. Did he, you know, I don't know, what did he think about me not getting there? Um, I would have absolutely loved to have been there for him, to have just held his hand, you know, and just to be with him and just tell him it's going to be okay. There's no humanity or flexibility to the way it's, um, it's way, the way it's administered on the ground. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern is with us live this morning. Good morning, Prime Minister. You heard the call there. Where is the humanity? I look. I, I did, and, and unfortunately, Ryan, that's I don't I don't have any background on that case, um, bar what I just heard then, which was devastating. None of us can imagine that kind of situation. We do have an exemption process where there have been people who have been released to be able to um, uh, go and join loved ones in that um, at that you know really awful stage um, of someone's terminal illness. Um, as I say, I don't know the details of that particular case, but what probably, probably is at play here is if it was indeed, you say, opposite where they were, so they'll be in an Auckland environment where there are extra protections around the hospitals at this time as well. So I imagine that's probably a couple of compounding issues at play there. But as I say, I can't speak to it in any detail because I, I just don't know what was considered by the Ministry of Health in making that decision. Fair enough, but why, why are people having to go to MIQ at all? I mean, if you're coming into Auckland, we've got 700 <laughs> positive cases at home. They're negative so tested, they're we'll, double we'll jabbed. We'll park then the, as you say, park the issue of there being extra precautions at hospitals, for instance. So what we are doing is we are, you can see that we're changing the way that we're dealing with things at the border. So we've already halved down the amount of time that people are spending in managed isolation. And we're already talking about moving to a new phase um, over time, just uh, we're looking to do this in the new year, of self-isolation generally at home. But the reason we're still using isolation as a tool is because we're treating people at the border as we do people who are contacts of COVID cases at but home. why? So if why? you're a contact, it, everyone knows. They feel like they've been because, treated like um, criminals. Ryan, We've got positive people, but, a couple of cases from here sitting in their homes. These guys are double jabbed, they're negative tested, and they're stuck in hotels for two weeks. They feel like crooks. Uh, not Well, they're actually not stuck in hotels for two weeks. We've obviously, as I've said, we've halved down the amount of time people are spending there now. And we are, right as we speak, we have people who are at home isolation having come in at the border. And what they're helping us to test are the things that we'll do in the future to make sure that when people, we ask people to isolate at home that they are. You'll remember, Ryan, right at the beginning of this so outbreak, we, don't trust we did them. that. We had people, if I could just... Oh, um, look, at look, Ryan, we know that... When people come home, they want to see their family, they want to see their friends. It's not a matter of trust, it's human nature. And you'll remember that right at the beginning of this outbreak, that's what we did. We asked people to stay at home once they arrived over the border. Unfortunately, not everyone did. And it only took a small handful of people in those cases to seed quite large outbreaks. And you'll remember a few of them. They were quite infamous yes, because they I, set off a lot of chain. I remember Thelma and so, Louise well. But I guess, I guess they're also oh, well, saying that, no, that you're actually, not... You, no, I was you, actually talking about the people that went home and caused outbreaks. Right. So we, you'll remember that we had a pub in Matamata Mata where That's we had right. quite a large outbreak but as a we're result. Trusting, so we're look, trusting the people about... who are positive at their homes in Auckland. We're trusting them that they won't go yeah. to the neighbour's house. And we're hearing that many of them are, or some of them are. And so, of course... And, of course, we are putting people who we consider um, to be potentially at risk of not st sticking with home isolation into facility as well. Ryan, we're in a transition at the moment. Things are starting to flip. We're shortening. We're moving to home isolation. We're just, at the moment, making sure that we do that carefully and safely because, as you'll hear from the people that help us with our modelling, if you switch off your border protections, 
quickly, you do seed extra cases. You do. It's a given, even with vaccinations, yeah. even with testing. And we all know that those thousands of cases we have from this outbreak at the moment started from one. So we can't be dismissive about one case being seeded in the community as not having an impact. It does. Yes. So we are but transitioning. But our rates are higher, but right? we're just trying to do it carefully. Yeah. Um, they okay. are. But when all of the modelling that you look at, the difference between large numbers of hospitalisations and smaller is one of the factors is what you do at the border. Okay. So if you flip that switch too quickly, it just layers up risk. So we're, we Give, are moving, given but we're what sequencing we know, it with a change. OK, given what we know, you just mentioned the modelling. If we were to open up right now to double vaxxed and negative tests, how many people would die? Oh, I'd need to... Well, I'd need to go back and if you'd... You can go back to the modelling that we, when came out from TPM in September. So that's Sean Henby's modelling. Because that did look at... We're still using that yeah, because so that, that, that estimates 7,000 dead at 75% so of the country th vaccinated. Do we still believe so that? So all I'm highlighting here... No, no, what you can see here from some of the modelling over time has just been that if you have no restriction on the border... I'm actually not sure whether we've even gone that far to have model... Let's model having absolutely nothing because even when they model with restrictions, you do see cases seeded. Um, so... You know, for instance, if you, even with seven days of home isolation, uh, you'll see from memory uh, multiples across a week, and that's even with home isolation, uh, because you do still get cases coming through even with vaccines. All right. Um, let's talk about the, the move to a, a new step in the levels today, which will take yeah. effect from tomorrow. We spoke to Chris Hipskins last week. He said he was going to consider allowing outdoor dining for hospitality because they've got a crucial window here to make money before Aucklanders leave for Christmas. And if they don't make that money, they'll, be, they'll screw the pooch, basically, for February and March next year. Is that on the cards for today? Uh, so what we have you, what we're considering today is just that that next step down. So that's uh, as you'll know, that's retail um, reopening. Uh, that's larger groups being able to meet outside. Um, so when I say larger groups, twenty five, uh, and keeping in mind for most hospitality venues, for instance, that wouldn't be a particularly um, viable level of operation for them. For many, it uh, would. And uh, also um, 25 people outside. So, And then uh, we move down into uh, event spaces, so museums and so on. Ryan, I think probably what it's also important to mention, though, is the milestone that was reached over the weekend. You know, in Auckland, we now have all three DHBs that have reached first dose, 90%. That means that within as early as three weeks... You could see Auckland moving into the new framework, which opens up everything again. And yes, there are public health measures, but that is the place where people will be able to operate in a way um, that is more financially sustainable. And in the meantime, we continue with the resurgent support payment and the wage subsidy uh, as we come to this point of transition. OK. Uh, December 1st, obviously, will be when Aucklanders can start to leave the city for their summer holidays. So have you yet sorted out how that's going to actually happen? Sorry, Ryan, I'm not quite sure why you've said December 1st. Oh, because you said is, that we would be allowed mean, out for summer. That's the first day of summer. I've never, <laughs> I've never ever given um, a, a date, well, but I but have indeed have, given a commitment you have that said Auckland is... No, no, <laughs> yeah. I have said that we will certainly for Christmas um, have said to Aucklanders that yes, they will be able to reunite for their, with their friends, families and loved ones for Christmas and then that summer, okay. that summer period. Because we've been contacted... Uh, and so... We've been contacted by essential workers at supermarkets who, are, who have obviously been doing it tough. They have to work Christmas and New Year. The only time they can see their family is in early December. What about them? So we've said that, and we have not given a date, Ryan, but I'm happy to talk you through some of the things, issues we're working through. You know, this we've never had a land boundary, a, a, a hard land boundary in New Zealand for, for, you know, an event like this. And what we've had in place was only ever designed to be temporary. So the issue we'll have is over summer, 30 to 40,000 vehicles a day, a day, yeah. seeking to move. Uh, and... Uh, 
at that point, checking things like testing and vaccine certificates for every occupant in a car, you can imagine um, uh, what logistical challenges that presents. Totally. So we've been working through the range of options in order to make sure that we meet that objective that we have set ourselves, Prime, which is that Aucklanders will be able to move. The, the I don't have is, the final decision for you today or the dates for you, and I understand that well, people well, want to know. Three weeks I absolutely ago, do. Three weeks ago but on this, this programme, is Prime Minister. That is yeah, I'm sorry, but three weeks ago on this programme, we had exactly this conversation and you told me exactly the same issues. And I asked Dr Ashley Bloomfield last week what advice you'd asked of him from a health perspective about getting Aucklanders out of the city for Christmas re-a-date. Have a listen to what he said last week. No decisions have been taken on that and we will be and look forward to giving advice on how that could occur. Well, I, we haven't given advice on any options at the moment. I think the Minister was uh, floating some ideas. No, no decisions have been taken as yet. Yeah. You haven't even asked? No, that's, that's, that's not a fair way to describe the, what we're working through at the moment. So, yes, because we already have a land border, and so we're already operating on the health advice at that border. So it becomes much more of an issue of how do we operate it at scale. And that's a Ministry of Transport issue, which is who is primarily leading this policy work. But, Ryan, we've given the commitment. We know we need to enable people to move. But this is a, this is a once... In a, a you know in a generation pandemic situation where we're trying to establish something that New Zealand historically has never had, we to the closest thing we have are toll booths, and it's vastly different than what we're trying to operate. Uh, at the same time, uh, it, it is only ever designed to be a temporary solution. We will not, in the long term, have a land boundary. So this is a temporary okay. solution we're will, looking will you, for, and it you, is a difficult one. Will you at least give us a date today that you will announce the date? Uh, no, because I'll be doing it as soon as I can. I don't want to push it out so far when actually we might be able to do it sooner. So okay. not at this stage, Ryan, but it is one of the things we've been consistently discussing as Cabinet Ministers. All right. Um, Prime Minister, just before you go, you were asked a lot at the weekend. It seemed ad nauseum about your future in politics. And people were saying, you know, are you going to still... Be and, and I don't know, I, I feel... I was wondering, should I be picking up a hint? I said to someone over the weekend, why are people asking me this so much? <laughs> what, do, you, do you think people are, are eager for you to leave? Well, that's, that was a question I was asking a friend. Um, I, I guess a, um, a uh, more uh, positive way to look at it might be that everyone probably looks at this job and thinks that looks a little bit hard right now. Well, especially the job you've had. I think that's what it is. It's the fact you've had the pandemic and you've had terrorist attacks and all this stuff. Have you ever thought about quitting, if you're being honest? Oh, I'm not going anywhere. I mean, do I have hard days? Absolutely. I'm human, but I'm not going anywhere. So that's a yes. <laughs> I mean, I think we all think about it. I think we all think about it, don't we, when our jobs get tough, when I'm things not get going, tough. I'm not going anywhere, but it was. I think no one would believe me if I didn't say that from time to time you think that's, this, is, this is a hard day. You mm. know, I have plenty of those, but I'm, regardless of that, I am not going anywhere. Um, until you are going somewhere and then it's different. But I... <laughs> it's politics, Ryan. Yeah. We know I'm in one of the most unpredictable careers that there is. Hey, just before we go on schools, next week then mm. to the primary school, or oh, there's a pencil date for them to open. Yeah. It, it... So on Wednesday, Minister Hipkins will be, we've been out talking to schools about how logistically we can make this as safe as possible and he'll be sh sharing more details on Wednesday. Next year, likely next year for parents. No, oh, no, no, not at, not at all. But we are working through how to make it safe. OK, all right, very good. Thanks for your time this morning, Prime Minister. Jacinda Ardern with us this morning. It's just gone now five minutes away from 8 o'clock.